Ingvar Komprad, the mastermind behind IKEA. The founder who turned a small-scale mail-order business into a global furniture giant and the crucial decisions he took to build such an empire, this is the story of Ingvar Komprad. Hey, are you new to the channel? Make sure to subscribe and check out our other videos. Ingvar Komprad was born on March 30, 1926, to a family of farmers in Sweden. His family was barely getting by, with his grandpa committing suicide after he was in debt, leaving his family to carry the burden instead, with his father and his grandmother being the ones who managed the family business. Since he was a little boy, Comprad showed his love and his desire to become an entrepreneur. Even at the age of 17, he had started selling matchboxes to neighbors from his bicycle to raise some money. He would buy them very cheaply from Stockholm and sell them at a low price but still make a good profit. However, he did find even better and much more profitable alternatives like fish, Christmas tree decorations, and even ballpoint pens and pencils. Seeing that, he started to grow slowly. Compad tried to change his strategy and soon moved away from making individual sales calls. He tried to reach a wider audience, and thus, he began advertising in local newspapers and operating a makeshift mail-order catalog. He distributed his products to the local milk van, which delivered the items to the nearby train station. It's an understatement to say that his plan succeeded. He started to become even more renowned throughout the city, and he gained some pretty good deals. Fast forward to 1950. Comprad introduced furniture into his catalog and, as soon as he was starting to get positive responses, he decided to make the furniture business official by discontinuing all other products. Hence, IKEA was born. Comprad says that he inspired the company's name from his initials and the first letters of the family farm, Almtarid, and the parish of Agunarid, where it is located. In 1953, Comprad opened a showroom in Amholt, by 1958, that eventually became the first IKEA store. In the 1960s, IKEAs opened in the capital, Stockholm, elsewhere in Sweden, as well as Denmark and Norway. Threatened by the company's growing presence, its competitors organized a boycott by IKEA suppliers, but it backfired since the people were already hooked on the products. Comprad went to Poland for sourcing that cut costs further and kept on expanding his brand. From 1970 to 2000, IKEA opened stores and became popular in Canada, the USA, Europe, Russia, and China. The company owned the vast majority of its stores, though about 10% are franchise operations. In 1976, Comprad moved to Switzerland. In 1982, he transferred control to the Dutch Foundation and, in 2013, he stepped down from the board of Inter-IKEA Group, a key company within the business, and named his youngest son, Matthias, as its chairman. His other two sons also held key positions. Comprad announced his retirement in 1986, but continued traveling to IKEA stores and making major decisions. He told to Forbes in 2000, I see my task as serving the majority of people. The question is, how do you find out what they want, how best to serve them? My answer is to stay close to ordinary people, because at heart, I am one of them. Over the next seven decades, Comprad built IKEA into the world's biggest furniture retailer, with about 400 stores in 29 countries. With sales that could reach $47.6 billion, more than 930 million store visits, and 210 million recipients of catalogs in 32 languages. Bloomberg Billionaire Index listed him as the 8th richest person in the world, with a net worth of over $58.7 billion. However, he was known for preferring a modest lifestyle. While all the other billionaires were flexing their cars and wealth, Comprad drove a modest Volvo and dressed unassumingly from local shops and even thrift shops. He portrayed such traits as the key to IKEA's success. He flew only economy class, stayed in budget hotels, and ate cheap meals. In the book, where he talked about IKEA's history, he mentioned that he used to visit the vegetable market right before it closed, hoping to shop for some cheap-priced vegetables. Comprad's humble lifestyle was also what taught him to pay attention to what the customers desired. He focused on what the consumer desires and how to consider that, but also never let said consumer push the boundaries. On that note, Young Mi Moon, a professor of Harvard Business School, wrote in her book, Different, 
most global brands built their reputations around a set of positives, the good things they do for their customers. What's intriguing about IKEA is that it has consciously built its reputation around a set of negatives, the service elements it has deliberately chosen to withhold from its consumers. IKEA is quite literally the antithesis of the view that the consumer is always right, and Comprad realized that with low prices, high quality, and effective solutions, consumers would be driven to IKEA stores as a unique destination shopping experience. For this, IKEA designed products that can be easily packed and transported with some of them having a manual for DIY assembly. IKEA was making its customers feel like they were the ones who did the entire job, creating a feeling of achievement and wanting to buy only IKEA's products to enjoy assembling them on their own. Comprad used a great technique when it came to the warehouses where they would sell their products. The company purposely built big warehouses on the outskirts of the cities near major ports or transportation hubs since the roads in those areas will always bring people to their stores. It was also because the rent was cheaper. Taking such crucial decisions when it comes to such stuff is not an easy task. Most people might cower and feel afraid of taking such risks. That's why Comprad employed a brilliant metaphor for this. He believes that the best way to encourage hard work and a strong character in others was to exemplify that in his own life. According to Comprad, if there is such a thing as good leadership, it is to give a good example. I have to do so for all the IKEA employees. His frugality is matched only by his desire to never waste his time. Time is money is a common theme in the world of business. But Comprad has another way of saying it. Comprad has built the IKEA corporate philosophy around efficiency and hard work instead of gains and money and put time management above all. IKEA has always kept few layers of management, practically eliminated titles and privileges, and has almost no suits and ties in the office showing that such a man only believes in fruits that come from good and professional work. According to Comprad, time is your most important resource. You can do so much in 10 minutes. 10 minutes, once gone, are gone for good. 10 minutes are not just one-sixth of your hourly pay. 10 minutes are a piece of you. Divide your life into 10-minute units and sacrifice as few of them as possible in meaningless activities. Ingvar Komprad passed away on January 27, 2018, in Smaland, leaving his legacy and his story of success for people to learn from. Thanks for watching our video. Make sure to like and subscribe to get our latest video editions.